It takes a lot of things to become an esports superstar. Unmistakable qualities like natural talent. It's all down to Bolo, the man, the myth, the legend. Can he possibly do it? He has the hot mark. Bolo, you have to be able to get the last kill. Can he do it? He does! <gasps> a restless dedication that borders on obsession. Yeah, he got it just off the block, but he didn't have the meter until it, and there it is, the chip damage for the win. Tokido 2 to 0. And of course, you can't earn street cred without silverware. OG! Your TIA! Champion! But as much as we've invested our time into watching the stories of these gaming celebrities unfold, the truth is, we basically know nothing about them. Sure, we can watch them on stream and catch glimpses of their personal lives, but what if we did more? What if we could tear down the stages and soundproof booths and really spend time with our heroes? Now, for most of us fanboys, that thought is, tragically, just a pipe dream. But there is one guy who's been able to turn it into a reality. I'm talking, of course, about Tyler, Tyler1 Steinkamp, the juiced up but occasionally misunderstood League of Legends diehard whose stature in the scene is simply gigantic. Hey, talk some shit now. Hey, talk some shit now. Who's talking shit in the chat? Ain't nobody. Prior to his self-proclaimed reformation, Tyler1 was the flagship toxic asshole streamer for Riot's much beloved MOBA. He was famous for running it down mid and generally just throwing tantrums and games when he didn't get his way. Bro, that shit's straight down. There we go, baby. It's been a long fucking time. After serving a two-year ban for behavior like that, Tyler was given a second chance at redemption in 2018, which, for the most part, he achieved. Even still, Tyler1 wasn't exactly the kind of guy you'd want associated with your esports scene. His name being mentioned in the same breath as any of the game's biggest stars was a laughable thought. And yet, in the past couple of years, this eardrum-destroying manlet has somehow developed an unlikely friendship with Lee Faker Sang Hyuk, the Korean god of League of Legends, whose awkward innocence is but a deceptive mask that conceals a merciless genius. The bed, oh, Faker may be in trouble here, Deathmark tries to clean it up for Ryu. Oh, look at the cleanse, look at the moves! Faker, what was that?! So, how is it that a guy who was once called the most toxic person in League somehow became best friends with the unkillable Demon King? What makes them the perfect odd couple? And what exactly does Faker get out of their strange partnership? All right, here is one. Okay. Let's call it a day, I gotta go. All right, folks, before we dive into what is undoubtedly the weirdest bromance in all of esports, I'm gonna ask that you like the video, run it down mid to the sub button, and spank on notifications. Jesus. These get worse every week. All right, so you probably know Tyler1 as League of Legends' most iconic rageaholic. He's been streaming the game for years, and his commitment to that grind has turned him into its biggest streamer. Yes, he literally gets more views than Riot. But when you look beyond his domination of metrics on Twitch, the truth is, Tyler1 is just your average League of Legends superfan. He shares his sophisticated takes on Riot's perfectly balanced meta changes. I'm so sick of this f***ing company. The trash! Fix the game! It sucks playing the shit! And he has a totally normal appreciation of his favorite champions. Look at his fucking jawline. Look at that. Look at that power in that jawline. Look at that beautiful, luscious hair. Look at the, the, this del these deltoids right here. Got a little bit of vascularity coming right here. I eat you like a snack. Now, even though League has historically made Tyler1 lose his shit harder than a G-fueled 12-year-old playing Call of Duty, the truth is, he loves it. 
And that infatuation has grown beyond just playing the game. In fact, he's become pretty invested in its esports scene. Hello, everybody! I am live here at the Tyler One Dome! The atmosphere in here, and I have never seen anything like this before in my life! Now, when it comes to league teams, there's only one for Tyler One, and that's T1. And no, it's not just because they share initials. It's because T1 is kind of a big deal. They are without a doubt the most legendary and internationally successful League of Legends org of all time, having won three Worlds titles and countless other domestic championships since entering the scene in 2012. And at the heart of T1's unmatched trophy hall is their star player, Faker. Gang looking to come in, here comes your initiation, they're right through! Oh my god! Oh my god. Faker Shockwave will find them all! And SKT, with a hell of a response, will take down four! Under turrets, Wolf coming in, double six, they get the flash from Nogne, Faker comes in, he's got the ult, he's got the kill! Beautiful, beautiful Faker. game from SKT. Dodged that petrifying yeah. gaze so beautifully, I almost couldn't see it. The play towards top side, they do it see Faker, goes. and the cocoon's not gonna land though, so can they get anything else? The flash chase, it's Spev onto his face, looking for a little bit more, and he's not oh. gonna go down! Faker, with just the ghost, gets away with it! Now, despite being the greatest League of Legends player of all time, the last few years of Faker's career have actually been a bit disappointing. Since winning his last Worlds in 2016, the unkillable Demon King and T1 have floundered on the international stage, whether that's in the form of being prematurely eliminated from major competitions or failing to qualify for them entirely. For a player with a history of success as rich as Faker's, anything less than victory is going to result in a massive amount of criticism. But as easy as it might have been for Tyler1 to jump off the Faker bandwagon, through the bad times, he's proven himself to be one of his hero's most loyal supporters. These people who are, who are shit-talking Faker, calling him like, oh, look at, Look at Shaker, dude. Ha <laughs> Look at Shaker. Nice. Because he's in a high pressure situation. His adrenaline is pumping. And here's the thing. The most adrenaline you fucking losers have ever had pumping is when you had to choose which way to go to class to avoid the school bully. Now, if you're an OG League fan like Tyler1, it's easy to see past the criticism of the game's greatest ever player. After all, everyone in esports is labeled washed as soon as results stop going their way. But Faker's recent struggles present a problem of a different sort. Now, don't get me wrong, no Korean player on any Korean team has ever become a household name in the West the same way that Faker has, but that's down to his success on the Rift. The issue is that if he isn't regularly lifting trophies, Faker doesn't really have that big of a marketable presence in the West. Barring a few memed upon blips, from our perspective, his image is that of a stoic, unflappable god. Sure, he occasionally streams on Twitch, but unless you understand Korean, good luck following along. Oh. 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 Now, in years past, this sort of cultural disconnect wouldn't actually have been that big of a problem. But since T1 partnered with Comcast back in 2019, they've been trying to expand their esports presence in the West. So T1, the org, not the guy, was faced with a problem. Their most marketable, popular player wasn't shining on the game's biggest stage. And on top of that, he came across as this cold, skill-shotting robot to Western fans because of a cultural divide. A characterization that's not really fair, especially if you see how he behaves for Korean audiences. Oppang Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. But the solution to T1's faker problem had actually presented itself back at All Stars 2018, when the unkillable Demon King first crossed paths with the unbannable Draven Simp. You see, after burying the hatchet with Riot, Tyler1 was brought out as a special guest at the event, 
and being a VIP, he finally had the chance to meet his hero in the flesh, which, as he told Travis Gafford, he could barely contain his excitement over. Look, listen to me. I'll tell you, I swear to God, I made him laugh. Careful. Sorry, I didn't yes. mean to hurt you. Yeah, I made him very laugh. Very strong, yeah. He, he like, he chuckled. I, yeah. I was like this, yeah. and he was like, <laughs> But the best part about their impromptu meeting is that Tyler One wasn't the only one who was excited about it. I was a very good person. At that time, I was very excited about it. 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 At first glance, Tyler One and Faker don't seem like they'd be instant friends. I mean, you couldn't think of two more opposite people. The out-of-control rager and the stoic master. The toxic meme lord and the three-time world champion. The king of league on Twitch and the king of league on LAN. The superstar and the super fan. Tyler, in celebration of our recent LCK Spring Split victory, T1 would like to present you this gift. T1 recognizes T1. We hope you will tune into MSI and cheer us on next month. P.S. LoveTyler1.com Discord Alpha. Wait. Don't tell me. Wait. And a f take! No way! And by all rights, that should have been the end of the story. But it wasn't. Despite their very obvious differences, culturally and just as human beings, T1 realized that Faker and Tyler One had a natural dynamic that made them perfect for each other. And so, in a bid to broaden Faker's Western appeal, the organization brought the two League of Legends juggernauts together over their mutual love of junk food. And man, was it glorious. What's your favorite food? Have you ever eaten Korean chicken? I have not. That's good. Is it? Yeah. Maybe we can get some sometime, dude. It could be a date. Oh, I'm busy. Sorry. <laughs> Want to trade? No. 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 Please. Please trade. Give me money. Good luck, Just guys. eat it. How is yours? Mm. Good? Mm. Nice, dude. We are basically best friends. Maybe. <laughs> now, from a content perspective, this pairing is simply gold. Tyler One's ability to effortlessly command the spotlight helps to loosen up the famously rigid Faker. Meanwhile, Faker's presence helps keep Tyler One in check because, I mean, he's just happy to be included. Although that's not to say that Tyler One isn't afraid to embarrass himself in front of Faker. All right, here is one. Okay. Let's call it a day, I gotta go. Man, can you please do on the left cheek? Of course, I even it out. Definitely. Number two. <laughs> Only one more. Ready? Last one. All right, that's a wrap. No, hug it out. You just be assaulted me. Now, to say that the experiment was a success would be an understatement. And off the back of the positive reception of the first video, T1 followed it up with a semi-competitive playdate for the duo at a retro arcade. Are you good at playing the game? I'm good at playing every single game in the world. Oh, really? I'm not. Oh, fake. Okay, you don't gotta be humble to me, man. Oh! Oh, he's camp. Got it, man. Oh. 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 Yeah. And in League of Legends. Um, no. <laughs> oh, give me that. Come on. Together, the two videos have over 5 million views. And you've got to imagine that COVID is the only reason we haven't gotten more. But Faker isn't the only one who benefited from this content union. The videos were so well received by the community that Tyler One was rewarded with a streaming contract by T1, paving the way for more Faker Tyler One content. Hello, Tyler One. Hey bud, how you doing, man? Hi. How are you? Good. And you? Not too bad. You look pretty good. Yeah, that's right. Tyler One called Faker live on stream. And while it's doubtful that they're gabbing every day, 
These unscripted interactions go a long way to not only making their bond feel real, but humanizing them both. Faker makes Tyler 1 come off less like a cartoon character and more like someone you could actually be friends with, whereas Tyler 1 makes Faker feel like more than some sort of revered fleshy calculator. Wrong. Muscle. Me. You look... <clears throat> you look so... big. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Even though their friendship might be founded on a commercial opportunity, which makes it hard to know just how real it is, what we do know is that their unlikely union has given us an entertaining window into a rarely seen side of two of League's biggest names. It's also shown us that there's more to the stars we watch on Twitch every day than their rage clips and highlight reels. They're real people with real emotions and real butts that can be spanked. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was an experience, but I'm glad I could do it with you, Faker. Me too. Like I told you with this bike ride, but I wear a headband underneath my helmet. So my fucking forehead, like my, you can see the little color, a little, just a little bit, not a lot, you know, but little color. But my forehead is literally just white. Nice. For this line, you should totally like green screen, like simple behind me or something, and like a little broken heart. <laughs>